Americans, your Republican politics, not less than your Republican religion, are flagrantly inconsistent. You boast of your love of liberty, while the whole political power of the nation, as embodied in the two great political parties, is solemnly pledged to support and perpetuate the enslavement of three millions of your countrymen. You invite to your shores fugitives of oppression from abroad. You honor them with banquets, salute them, cheer them, pour out your money like water to them. But the fugitives in your own land, you hunt, arrest, shoot, and kill. We have been joined by Minister Abdul Farrakhan, spokesman for the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad of the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And Ms. Hunter has the first question. Minister Farrakhan, you were once one of the nation's most visible and articulate spokesmen, but it seems you've had a low profile since Wallace D. Muhammad assumed the leadership of the organization. Is that by design, if it's true? Well, I think that um, as a spokesman for the Honorable W.D. Muhammad, as I was also a spokesman for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, I am been, have been very visible. In fact, um, since I have um, been under the leadership of the Honorable W.D. Muhammad, I have spoken in Central America, South America, the Caribbean, and also in Africa. So the scope of the nation's position has been more worldwide, and so my scope has also been that. You then have had to deal with many, uh, probably explaining and articulating many of the policy changes that uh, Mr. That's Muhammad correct. has uh, initiated, including integration. How is that being received uh, both on the outside and inside? Well, let me say this. As um, black people look at the nation of Islam, we have always liked to classify or characterize the nation of Islam's development. And uh, if we look at Islam as religion, you never refer to Islam as an integrationist religion. Though in Islam there are black Muslims, red Muslims, brown Muslims, yellow Muslims, and white Muslims. When the thrust of the nation of Islam was to correct a sickening condition of the black mind in that we were taught to hate our own blackness, and the Honorable Master Elijah Muhammad, may peace be upon him, accomplished this through teaching us the history and accomplishments of black people. But now as we move into the broad world of Islam, then we have to uh, learn to respect all of the components of that nation of Islam. So you would never say that Muslims are integrationists with the connotation of integration, but we are Muslims, and every Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. Minister Farrakhan, uh, in the policy changes, uh, is it true that the Temple Number 7 in New York, the name has been changed to Malcolm Shabazz Temple? That's true. Last week in Chicago, the Honorable, the Honorable W.D. Muhammad, in recognition of the great work that Malcolm X did for the nation when he was among the Nation of Islam, renamed Temple Number 7 as Malcolm Shabazz Mosque Number 7. This approach, that is, saying that Malcolm made great contributions to the nation, is obviously a departure from the previous teachings of the nation. Is that correct? No, that is not correct. It is historically true and world known that uh, Minister Malcolm made great contributions to the Nation of Islam, but when he departed from the Nation of Islam, there was no mention of Malcolm's accomplishments. Now, since the Honorable W.D. Muhammad has taken over, and his mind is a mind of balance and justice, he wants to give balance to the whole Nation of Islam. It is proper that he recognize the work that Minister Malcolm did in establishing Mosque number seven, and in also helping the growth of the nation of Islam. Another major policy change seems to be the um, entry now of the nation of Islam into politics. Is that uh, does that go along with the same thinking that the integration did? That there's a certain amount of ground building that has to be done within the organization before um, it is in entered. Well, let into me the say field. this. Um, Politics or election presupposes intelligence. When a child comes into the world, it is lovingly dictated to by its parents because it hasn't developed the knowledge or the intelligence to make 
proper selection to give people the right to vote and not give them the basic intelligence of how to vote is to give them a tool but not the use of that tool. So for 44 years the Honorable Master Elijah Muhammad was building in the black community and especially and particularly with the members of the Nation of Islam a basic knowledge of self where we would be able to know what is good for self as opposed to what is detrimental to self. Now since we live in America and live in the community the Honorable W.D. Muhammad has seen fit that at this particular time in our development we can no longer stand by and watch people come into office that are diametrically opposed to the aims and aspirations of black people when we have the most disciplined organization in the United States of America, then this force should be used to put into office those that speak for the aims and aspirations of the total black community and that force must be used to take out of office or to stop from getting into office those whose aims and aspirations would send black people down a road that we've already traveled and don't intend to travel again. Does that mean that uh, we can look forward to seeing the nation of Islam as a voting block? The Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad has not made a statement of policy regarding voting. But on February the 29th at the annual Muslim convention, the Honorable W.D. Muhammad will clarify and make the official statement concerning the Nation of Islam's call to register to vote and voting. You have opened the doors, the, the policy, new policy is that the doors to membership in the Nation of Islam is now, uh, unlike previously, open to whites. Have whites accepted the invitation? Yes, there are some whites who have accepted the invitation of the Nation of Islam uh, to enter the ranks of the Muslims. And I know that this causes great um, concern in the Bilalian or in the black community. But what we must consider is this, that if the teaching of the Honorable Master Elijah Muhammad could break the bestial mentality that was forced upon our people that caused us to be number one in destruction of self, and now we are number one in loving self, in doing for self, in uniting self, then why should we leave the white man's mind as it is when it is that same bestial mind of his that was forced upon our people? So if we have a teaching that could destroy that mind in us, then let us get busy and destroy that mind in the dominant community that we may live in peace in the continental United States of America. Is it also true that prior to this change in policy, whites were already Muslims, or Muslims, some Muslims were married to people who were white, who practiced the religion in the home, but not in public. No, that is not true. You know as well as I that there are white Muslims in the world, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad f uh, saw fit to keep the door of the Nation of Islam closed to whites, and not only to whites, but to Puerto Ricans, to Mexicans, to all other racial and ethnic groups because we had a particular problem. Black people had no self-image, no self-worth, no self-root in our own history. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, after returning that history and knowledge to us, he began to open the door to Puerto Ricans, to Cubans, to Mexicans, even some Chinese Muslims, some Koreans joined the ranks of the Nation of Islam. So in the latter years, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was moving toward this same move that the Honorable W.D. Muhammad has made, in fact, in his last speech to us, on February the 26th, 1974, there were two white Muslims sitting on the rostrum with his ministers. And he said to his followers, I tell you from the depth of my heart, I want you to learn to respect all people, and you should respect those who are trying to respect us. Mr. Farrakhan, I'm told that the, uh, uh, Mr. Muhammad is attempting to get the nation out of debt and has begun cutting corners like ending uh, the paying automatically of legal fees for Muslims who get into trouble with the law. Is the nation in debt and are corners being cut in that manner? Yes, the nation of Islam is in debt and the nation of Islam is doing everything in its power to correct our financial posture and financial policies that led to debt. The Honorable uh, W.D. Muhammad not only inherited a nation, 
he inherited a problem. And in solving problems, we have to do that which is expedient and that which is necessary. And one of the things that the Honorable W.D. Muhammad has seen fit to do is to instill in the Muslim leadership a concern for living habits, uh, a concern for um, monetary spending. He has cut corners and laid down guidelines that would cause us to be frugal and wise in every economic venture that we go into so that we won't suffer the loss that we have suffered in the last two years. Uh, I'm told that he has stopped uh, compelling the Muslims who would sell the uh, newspaper to either sell or pay up and that as a result the circulation as well as the uh, revenues from the newspaper are down. Is that so? Well, let me say this. The Honorable W.D. Muhammad is not a man who believes in force. In fact, the Holy Quran teaches that there is no compulsion in religion. If a leader cannot motivate, stimulate, and inspire men to do, then that's a fault of the leader. But force should never be used. So when you take away force, then people who lack the ability to inspire, then the, the follower who needed force to do it would fall back. But now better leadership methods are being employed by the Honorable W.D. Muhammad and the sale of the Bilalian News is now on the increase. <clears throat> Mr. Farrakhan, I think we have time for one more question and one more response. Inescapably, on the minds of non-Muslims, the public, there is the, uh, th there is the tendency to compare the new policies of the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad, namely the integration, namely the uh, adherence to uh, the American flag, uh, the involvement in politics, uh, the easing of uh, certain restrictions on, on uh, uh, female Muslims, that they are in conflict, these new policies are in conflict with the teachings of the late Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Those who say this are really not familiar with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In fact, uh, we are absolutely rooted in the teachings of the Honorable Master Elijah Muhammad, but what you're seeing now is a growth and a development and an expansion on those teachings. I certainly wish we had more time to show that in the teaching of the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad, you find justification and root for it in the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. I also, uh, Mr. Minister, wish, Brother Minister, wish that we had more time, but I would like to thank you so much for taking your time and on behalf of the Nation of Islam being with us on Black Journal. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank, in, in while we're thanking, Charlene Hunter of the New York Times for being with me, and Reverend Jesse Jackson, president of Operation Push. Next week, we will return with our regular format with co-host Robert Hooks, who was the star of the, uh, NYPD, and special guest Bob Johnson, executive editor of Jet Magazine, who will be explaining why interracial couples appear on Jet's cover. Obviously, Billy Taylor will be back with music and Nipsey Russell in our game quiz, Can You Dig It?, where the biggest prize of all will be the knowledge we gain of ourselves. Join us on our next edition. Goodbye from Black Journal and our family, and God bless you. The preceding program was made possible by a grant from Pepsi-Cola Company.